Where are you at with Winds of Winter? How's it coming? Working on it! <laughs> no, God! Working on it. Believe me, you'll know when it's done. No, God, please, no! No! So we got Fire and Blood coming in November. November, that's yeah. right. Fire and Blood Volume 1. No! No! Hi everybody! Welcome to another Fire and Blood video breaking down George R. R. Martin's book about the history of the Targaryens. This is the third video about Aegon the Conqueror, Aegon the Dragon, or Aegon the Moron more like it. Because listen, this guy dies, well I can't criticize him for dying, but when he dies it becomes crystal clear that he did absolutely zero to prepare the kingdom to what comes next, what comes after him, which is actually the most essential part of his job once he sits on the throne. Hmm? So what was he actually doing when he should have been grooming his kids to replace him? Ah, when Aegon died, he was in the middle of telling his grandkids about his conquests, like a retired ball player yammering about his past exploits to little children who are probably saying, Poppy Aegon, we already heard about the Field of Fire a hundred times. <laughs> because this douche, he's all about himself, me, me, me. What about your heirs, numbnut? It looks to me like the best part of you ran down to crack your mama's ass and ended up as a brown stain on the mattress. This doofus who established a new kingdom with his bare hands well, more like his dragon's bare fire, is the direct reason for all the problems that ensued when his descendants took office. He almost managed to ruin the whole thing, which would have turned him into a historical footnote. He was fortunate there were dragons, I'll tell you that. And you can trace the fall of his house 300 years later, you know, when there were no more dragons to save them. You can trace their destruction to the obvious and frankly boneheaded decisions King Stupid here made. Don't call me stupid. Oh right! To call you stupid would be an insult to stupid people! So for the next 10 or so minutes, please forget everything you thought you knew about Aegon. Yeah, yeah, we know how he told his story. Aegon of House Targaryen, the first of his name, blah 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 blah. Now I want to talk about what's not written in the history of the Lord of the Seven Kingdoms and Protector of the Realm, my ass. I want to break down what you read between the lines. I think this is a deliberate jab by him towards Aegon and was written into the subtext of the story. Any criticism in that world was suppressed because no one in the realm back then could write anything negative about Aegon. And I don't think that the maester who writes this story, I don't think he realizes as he was writing how bad he's making Aegon look. And trust me, you're gonna notice very soon it's god awful bad. Okay, think about it. Aegon established a family business. He was the entrepreneur, he took the significant risks and it paid off beautifully. His brand, the Targaryen brand, became the number one brand in the realm. Then he leaves his company to his children and they don't know the first thing about how to run this company. They're clueless. <laughs> it's like the first day on the job. <laughs> they don't even know how to deal with each other. Who gets what and who is in charge of what? What's up with that, King Cretan? You're a cunt. You're a cunt now. You've always been a cunt. And the only thing that's going to change is you're going to become an even bigger cunt. Now you have some more cunt kids. Do I need to elaborate on the critical nature of this job that King Halfwit the first fumbled like a rookie? He never told them anything about ruling. <laughs> you don't want to prepare your kids for life, asshole. <laughs> Man, you are one pathetic loser. Let them know what are the challenges that await them. Wow, wow, he's the most pathetic father ever. He didn't teach them anything about the one job they were destined to hold their entire lives. He left animosity between his two boys, his two heirs. <laughs> we know something about this world. We know something about the medieval world. The first rule of ruling is prepare your heir. And it was clear for all to see that the presumptive heir, Anis, is too nice. And his little brother, wannabe heir, is too cruel. Their character weaknesses are glaring. You don't want to talk to them about it? Huh? You nincom poop. You would need three promotions to get to be an asshole. Imagine not a king, a carpenter who leaves his family business to his son without having taught him about wood. Nah, they'll be fine. 
and we're talking about running a kingdom. Come on, this is ridiculous. But he's like, no, 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 I want to tell the grandkids the story of Harren Hall again. <laughs> I mean, this guy drank his own Kool-Aid and believed he was a god, and thus everything he made was infallible. But a king has to live in the real world. An undeniable reality that King Deepshit here forgot. You dirty eating piece of slime! You scum sucking pig! You son of a motherless goat! The dragon blood went straight to his head. So, yeah, he beat all his enemies, established a new political unit with himself on top. Solidified his hold on it thanks to his political acumen. Ah, and, and his dragons. But he wasn't just some pillager who took something that wasn't his and got back home, no, no. He was a king of a new kingdom and the head of the ruling family, House Targaryen. The very first thing a king must do is ensure continuity, bring heirs into the world, into the fold, something that projects stability for the future. And as we saw, the moment he dies, people start to look around and say, hey, we can take these guys. They're not Aegon. Why did you have to put them through it? Come on. It's not easy getting to the top, but keeping the crown, that's a whole other ballgame. Especially when everybody knows your anus, he be weak. <laughs> you didn't seem to notice because you were so busy watching your highlights reel. <sighs> yeah, 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 you nailed that landing, you idiot. You may talk like an idiot and look like an idiot, but don't let that fool you. He really is an idiot. And it doesn't take a dragon scientist to notice that, that Maegor, he will try to undermine his gullible older brother. You didn't think about preempting that inevitability, you twat. I bet you're the kind of guy that would fuck a person in the ass and not even have the goddamn common courtesy to give him a reach around. So after this moron dies, there's tension about who will succeed him. Hmm? His incompetent firstborn Anis or his quarrelsome second son Maegor. Hmm. Ah, uh, they should... <laughs> You should have had a clear division of power way in advance, and you should have also written in your will what you want to do about Balerion. Remember Balerion, the huge monster who won you the realm? You were the guy sitting on top of him. <laughs> you were the king because you had this big dragon. So the person who had Balerion took whatever he wanted from everybody and usurped all the other lords. But your heir, he has another dragon. So what happens if Maegor gets Balerion? Hmm? He can beat his older brother, can't he? Is that too complicated for you to follow, King Simpleton? I'll use small words so that you'll be sure to understand, you warthog-faced buffoon. So Maegor indeed claims Balerion, without telling anyone. Great. And things quickly deteriorate under Anis, who is too soft. He gives people whatever they want. He's too clueless to realize that he can get away with what his imbecile father got away with. He betrothes his daughter to his son, and he's like, why do all these religious people don't like it? Oh, is it in their doctrine to oppose incest? Mm -hmm. Can someone look it up maybe? But, but my dad did it. No, why don't they like me? And it says clearly that he trusted everybody. Seriously, what kind of king is that? I'll tell you what kind of king. The son and heir of King Pinhead over here. You are physically repulsive, intellectually retarded, vulgar, insensitive, selfish, stupid. You have no taste, a lousy sense of humor, and you smell. He was too busy writing in his history how much of an awesome granddad he was. This nitwit not only declared himself the perfect conqueror and ruler and person, but he was also the ideal granddad. It was written that King Aegon himself wept the first time his granddaughter was placed in his arms and thereafter doted upon the child. Give me a break, if you really cared about your granddaughter, you would have prepared her father for the job, you know, to protect her from harm, because infighting within the family is bad for your family. Do you get me, you dunce? A hundred thousand sperm and uh, you were the fastest. <laughs> Maybe if we were to get Aegon on the couch, channel our inner Noga, we could say that he might have wanted his kids to fail. Maybe he resented them for being young and having a future. Perhaps it was hard for him to get them ready because that would have made him sad that he wasn't an actual god, but rather a mortal human being. Facing your mortality is not easy. Maybe that was a thought that he just couldn't deal with, so he blocked it out. Or maybe he was a dumbass. 
Jesus Christ, I met some dumb bastards in my time, but you outdo them all. Get over there! <laughs> okay, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this video. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. May God have mercy on your soul. I enjoyed preparing for it and recording it now. And there are some more Fire and Blood videos coming up. The next one is about Magor and Anis reading them according to Machiavelli. So subscribe to get that video. I'd like to tell you about a new feature I added to our Patreon page on patreon.com slash gotacademy. It's a Slack community. We can talk over there about everything keep in touch, interact continuously. So if you want to do that, click the link below, patreon.com slash godacademy. I want to thank our patrons. So thank you everybody for watching. I'll see you all next time. Bye. I fart in your general direction. Your mother was a hamster and your father smelt of elderberries.